Okay, so we're going to do the hysteresis check. We're at 45,000 foot. I've got 22,000 foot set in standby at a rate of 6,000 foot per minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the airplane really fast. We're at 45,000 foot and we're going to get down to 22,000 foot right now. And we're going to check and make sure that uh, it doesn't fail for hysteresis. It's really going. Okay, so I'm going to let this unwind for a minute, and when we get down to 22,000 foot, um, we'll take a reading at 22,000 foot for hysteresis, which is half of the uh, maximum altitude, or the closest test point to half of the maximum altitude of this test. Okay, so we're coming up almost to the checkpoint here, let me get a zoom in. We're going to stop at 22,000 foot, so it's getting close to it. And then actually we want to slow it down to 1,000 foot or great, 1,000 foot before. So here's what comes to slow down. We slow it down to 1,000 foot, right about now. We're slowing it down now. What a difference, huh? A thousand foot feels like it's just crawling now. That BSI is very accurate. Well, it's coming off the air data computer, but it's definitely accurate. It's spot on. See, there's hysteresis in this one. See it? There's a hundred foot split on that one. It's about a hundred foot behind. That's hysteresis, ladies and gentlemen. See, the tester is right at 22,000 foot. Set a timer, please. We gotta hold it for five minutes. So the number one air data computer and altitude indicator show 10 foot above and at the beginning of the test on the way up it was also 10 foot above at 22,000 foot. But you can see the standby altimeter shows 100 foot above and that's, that's an example of hysteresis. Running it so fast has triggered error in the instrument. No, we don't tap it out until after the five minutes. And that instrument probably hasn't changed, right? And where were you at the beginning? Plus five. Plus five, so yeah, typically air data computers, they don't suffer from hysteresis. It's just the analog instruments do. Oh, I'm gonna have to blur that out. There we go, it's blurred out now. Uh, 
Alright, so I'm gonna pause this so uh makes the video look more interesting. 18. Alright, so we waited five minutes and we took a reading, and now we're gonna do the next hysteresis checkpoint, which is done at 40% of maximum altitude. So we're gonna do this hysteresis checkpoint at 18,000 feet. So it's running. All right, so we're at a thousand foot to go. Oh shit! I I hit the button with my. So much for that video. <laughs> Hold on, I hit the wrong button with my tester, so I've got to uh, equalize it. All right, so we're gonna do this this checkpoint at 18,000 feet. And then here at 18,000 foot, we'll wait one minute, and it's gotta be within plus or minus 75 foot for, of where it was before. And it was at uh, plus five foot before, it looks like it's at maybe plus 10 now, so obviously hysteresis is not a problem. You can see over here on the standby altimeter, it's, it's hysteresis, it's definitely suffering from hysteresis. Uh, originally it was like almost right at zero, and now it's at uh, 150 foot above. So it uh, definitely would fail, it is failing for hysteresis. And, it, and we had already failed this altimeter at the beginning of the check for scale error, but uh, we're just showing you what it, how, you know, for the purposes of this video, I'm just showing you how it works. But uh, definitely this is a fine example of failing it for our hysteresis. Okay, now for the after effect test, uh, we're going to put in a rate of 6,000 foot per minute. And then we're going to go back to uh, to ground, and we're going to take another reading, which is it's the same thing as a hysteresis inspection, but they call it after effect because uh, this is the bottom of the test. So we're we're seeing the effect of the uh, hysteresis after the test is finished. So anyway, I'm going to pause the video again and let it run down to uh, back to field elevation, and we'll take the last reading here. Got it. Set up an autopilot capture at 4,000 feet. I'm going to select heading, altitude select on both panels. You don't have any bars on your side. Okay, we'll just use my side. Uh huh. Let's see if we can change that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, there you go. There's your bars. Okay, so I'm going to change our heading bug so we don't command a turn. Okay, so now it's going to put your command bars in the center. Autopilot's engaged. Okay, so then as the altimeter comes up into 4,000 foot, we're going to get a tone and a light a thousand foot before telling us that we're about to capture altitude. And then we're going to get, uh, as we capture altitude, we're going to get another tone saying we're capturing. That's going to change to capture. Should get altitude on there. And then the command bars should come on saying that, uh, or the command bars should command a pitch up to pull the airplane out of the dive. So now we've got, you just heard the tone. We've got a light saying that we're a thousand foot before altitude capture. So everything looks good. The command bars should start to show a pitch up at about 200 foot to go. The altitude select should turn to altitude capture. We should get an altitude hold light come on. And I'm actually going to make it capture at 4,000 and hold that.
Hey, can you see the bars here? Yeah, I can do it. You can do it on yours. Okay, so here's 200 foot to go. We got outs to capture. The command bars are pitching up to pull the airplane out of the dive. And I've actually set the tester to stop it at 4,000 foot, so it's thinking the airplane has pulled out of the dive. If you look up here on the mode selector panel, the flight director mode selector panel, altitude captured, it switched to on mode. So now we're going to deviate slightly and test the altitude hold function of the RVSN autopilot. So I'm going to go up by, say, 50 foot to 4,050 foot, and we should get a pitch down command because the airplane is trying to push the airplane back down to 4,000 feet. So there's the command bars. It's got a pitch down command. Okay, so now I'll restore it back to 4,000 foot. And that should now go back to wings level. There it is, back to wings level. Okay, so then now I'll deviate another 50 foot below to 3,950 foot. And we should get uh, a pitch command up. And there's your pitch command up. That's good. So now I'm just going to keep running it down. And then we should get the altitude bus tone once it goes past 200 feet. It might be 300. We got lots of wings uh, pitch up command because the airplane really wants to go back to where it's supposed to be. There's disengage on the autopilot. Okay, so we're checking the airspeed indicator on the airplane here for accuracy. I'm just going to run through a couple of checks. 